Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dev, and I'm the Cyber Analyst at Stay Cyber Safe. Um, so today our topic is surfing safely, and uh, <clears throat> during the session we will also be joined by Sylvana Macri. She is the founder at Stay Cyber Safe. She will give us more insight about the topic, and uh, yeah, we'll start straight away because we're slightly late today. But before we start. Uh, let me just remind you that this session will be for one hour. We'll have 15 minutes uh, Q&A at the end of the session. So make sure you note down any questions uh, in the chat box, in the Q&A uh, uh, part of Zoom, and uh, I will try to answer them as well as Silvana once she joins us. So before we start, I'll just uh, switch off my camera so that I don't get any uh, connectivity issues during the session. Okay, so we'll start. So as you know, all of us, uh, we use the internet on a daily basis. Life without the internet is mostly unimaginable nowadays. We use it for, for typically everything. Uh, we use it for virtually everything in our lives, for connecting with those around us, for work, for education, for entertainment. Visiting website is, most, is the most basic uh, part of using the internet. And with, with the digitization and recently uh, COVID-19, lots of, uh, of you guys, especially SMEs, they have had no choice but to operate online just to ensure business continuity. So you have to be online more than ever nowadays. So it, the internet can open up a world of fun and opportunity, but as well as a lot of unexpected problems depending on how careful and how well prepared we are while we are surfing the internet. Not securing your access can prove to be really disastrous. So protecting yourself is uh, to ensure you're protecting your devices, you're protecting your software and your connections as well. And making informed choices when doing things on the web can make a huge difference to your business security online. So first, what should you do to, to be able to browse more securely, more safely on the internet? First, you should start by protecting your browser. How you would do that? So a well-configured uh, secure browser is crucial for protecting your data as you browse the, the web with privacy. Pay attention to the browser's warning. Most, most websites, most web browsers, they will usually warn you when they detect any uh, malicious activity in a malicious website or if you're poten potentially being uh, exposed to any malicious content when you're browsing that, bra that uh, website. So ensure you go no further once you're being warned about it. And also the secure browsers that protect your privacy is a critical tool for staying safe online and keeping your data secure for, from uh, third parties. Uh, if you see on the link here, uh, this, uh, this link, it will take you to, uh, to a website which we're going to share later during the Q&A session. And this, uh, these are browsers uh, that must be you, Syl. Uh, anyway. Hi, guys. Thank you, Syl, for joining us. Uh, I started uh, just now. We're waiting for a few more uh, people to join us. I've introduced you already, so thank you for making time. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm here defending the world <laughs> against all the cyber attacks. And <laughs> yeah. So I was just talking, uh, taking them through the, some of the secure and private browsers that they can use while they are using the, the internet. So uh, we will share all the links on, in the Q&A sessions uh, uh, during the last 15 minutes uh, of the session. So we'll share that link later. But okay. uh, basically, You'll yes. use Q&A to share the links or chat, one of the, one of the two? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and it's recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. Lovely. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so we'll proceed. So we were just telling, uh, I was just telling the, the attendees how important it is to protect their browser and that a well-figured browser is, is uh, very important while they are browsing the internet. So um, the next, uh, in the next few slides, uh, we're going to talk, talk to you about uh, uh, an updated browser. So a secure browser is one which is also up to date. An outdated, an outdated browser will often have uh, security issues or bugs. Hence, make sure you're using the updated version of any browser that you're using. Uh, here, we're taking the example of Google, Google Chrome. So if you see uh, on this snapshot, how you, how you can check if your browser is the latest version, just go to, so step one is to click on the three dots on the top right corner of, uh, of the Google Chrome webpage. And then once you click on the three dots, you will get the drop down list and you go to help. When you go to help, you can click on uh, Google Chrome. As soon as you click on Google Chrome, you would, you would get a notification whether you have to, to relaunch your browser if it's uh, not the latest version or else if, it's, if, if it has already been updated, you will get this notification that your Google Chrome is up to date. So make sure after this session, in case you're using a Google Chrome, you go and check this and update it if it's uh, outdated. And usually uh, once you uh, update the browser, uh, it will ask you to restart your device. It, usually this takes about two to three minutes. So it's, it's, not, it doesn't, it's not a long process. So you can do it quickly as soon we're done with this session. Uh, the next one is about uh, Microsoft Edge. For Microsoft Edge, it's uh, very similar to Chrome as well. You just have to click on the three dots on the top uh, right corner. And again, you go on to help and feedback and you can check, uh, you can click on about Microsoft Edge. Then you will get the notification, you will get the message whether you're using uh, an updated browser or if it's not updated, you will get the option of updating it straight away and then restarting your device uh, again. With, with Windows, uh, if you're using a Windows 10, you can also uh, update the browser automatically when you're doing the usual uh, updates which are available on a regular basis. So once you do the update, which takes longer, it will install, it will update everything, uh, the software, the, the apps, uh, which you're using for Windows, as well as the browser. And how you would do this is just go to settings on your device and then click on update and security. And there you will see the Windows update. You can, you can, enable, you can enable automatic updates on all your devices. And while we, we recommend it's uh, like the basic thing to do with regards to being secure while you're browsing the internet, it's because uh, automatic updates, they will, uh, well, all updates uh, will allow that your software is protected against any type of security vulnerabilities and any problems regarding the operating system. For example, if you're using a Mac, a Mac uh, Windows or a Chrome OS, and you can enable uh, update automatically on these type of uh, OS. How you would do that? Again, we have some, some links here that we're going to share with you during the Q&A session so that you can enable it as soon as we finish with the session any update which is available, you will be prompted and it will be automatically installed. Well, so while browsing the internet, there are also some general hygiene that you should be uh, adopting. So it's just like a safe behavior because you don't want to be a victim uh, while you're browsing the internet. internet. You want to have a fun experience, uh, like a good online experience. And how you can do that is by using strong passwords. You can also use passphrases, which is more secure nowadays because with passwords, the longer they are, the more, uh, uh, the more secure they are, the, the, the more uh, difficult it is uh, for malicious, uh, malicious uh, users to crack those passwords. So make sure you have very strong, long and um, unique passwords so that you protect your identity and security online. We also recommend you to use a password manager. Why a password manager? It's because uh, so you don't have to use multiple passwords. You don't have to remember multiple passwords. You can just remember one 
one major password for that password manager because a password manager is like an app that you uh, that you're using which stores uh, your password in an encrypted version or your password so for example if you have uh, 150 credentials uh, that you are storing because especially when you're a business you have different websites that you're dealing with so you will usually have lots of passwords so using a password manager that will allow you to have different password to all the different accounts that you have uh, online and then storing them on that password manager will allow you not to uh, to remember all those passwords and you don't have to note them down like like some uh, people do which is really not recommended and with uh, uh, with website usually you will uh, notice there are when you, when you when there are suspicious, suspicious websites that you are going to or if you have received any uh, you have seen any suspicious link on the website there are a few red flags and psychological triggers that you will uh, often notice it might be a combination of them or just one or two of them so the the psychological triggers usually are fear urgency curiosity greed and helpfulness so anytime you see any suspicious link, try to identify these type of uh, triggers and red flags on emails, website, or any social platforms. And also when you receive links, for example, on an email, you will get a suspicious email and it has a link in it. How you can check if uh, that link is, is a malicious one. For example, if you're getting uh, an email from, plat from, uh, from PayPal and they're asking you to change your details, and it appears a bit suspicious you can you can see some of these triggers for example fear or even uh, like greed or even urgency they're asking you to change your details on paper right now and it appears a bit suspicious you you will you will see some of these red flags how you can check that just hover over the link that is being sent on that email but in that link will uh, when you hover over the link, it will give you the exact uh, part where that, uh, that link is redirecting you. For example, if it was, if it was paypal.com, uh, you would see paypal.com there. And if it's not uh, the real paypal.com, it will be usually a very long link that you're not able to read. So these are a few tips that you can check on any suspicious email that, that you receive. And um, very often when you are getting... Um, when you are getting uh, a phishing email or you're just going to a website they will ask you to uh, to put in some credentials or they will ask you to download uh, something or just click on a link which is redirecting you, redirecting you to a different website again these uh, by clicking on links at times it it might uh, download malicious software and these malicious, malicious software usually they would want some information from you they would want your credentials or they will just want some confidential information that they might use against you. So ensure you don't download any files when you're getting a, any suspicious emails or you're just visiting any, any types of uh, website which is not uh, uh, reput reputed or uh, which is just unknown to you. And then uh, one, one safe behavior that we recommend to lots, lots of people is not to overshare on social media. Social media is accessible by everyone. Any, whatever you post on social media, it will be there unless you have some privacy settings on your account. And, and being, um, being very present as SMEs on social media, you tend to post a lot, but try to, uh, to post only information that, be, that will be useful to the business. Try not to, 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 store, to share information, for example, which might be used against you. And with, uh, we were talking about phishing earlier. Based on the latest uh, stats from, from Scamwatch, Scamwatch, which is Australian, the Australian stats as of July 2020, uh, the, the top 10 uh, scam reported are the one listed here. Phishing, as we said, is the, is the biggest threat to all uh, businesses and individuals. In, in as of 2020, more than 20,000 uh, 20, um, scams were reported by, by people and businesses. 
and nearly 800,000 Australian dollars were, were lost uh, in scams as of July 2020. Based on the stats, we've, all, we've also noticed that uh, social media platforms, they are among the top uh, scam delivery methods in Australia. That's why we ask you to limit what you share. Whatever you're sharing can be used against you. So before you, person, you share anything, try to, to think twice whether they are the right information or um, whether this information can be used against you. So try to limit whatever type of, of information you're sharing that won't be useful to your clients that will be uh, used against you. And uh, with your businesses, and um, we, we, we tend to, to recommend to check site reviews and reputations. For example, if you are uh, buying stuff from other uh, shopping websites, check the reviews first. Check the reviews and the reputation. Are they, uh, have they received very bad re reviews? Are they not well reputed? Uh, they don't have a good reputation. So try not to do business with these type of, uh, of website. And does the website has a padlock on top? So if you look on the address bar, does it have a, does it, does it have a padlock? Is it an HTTPS, HTTPS website? HTTPS, HTTPS website usually, um, well, they are not uh, completely secure because domains can be bought by anyone. So, but at least it is still an additional check that you can do when you're doing your shopping online. And uh, you can use ad blockers as well to stop malware from, from being delivered to your browser. So try to install some of the ad blockers. You can use it as a, as a plugin as well. And now with, uh, with uh, shopping online, if for example, you are visiting shopping malls and you're getting a notification if you want to join to some specific uh, free uh, public Wi-Fi. Very often, they, they, the name looks, uh, looks very familiar, like it is for a very uh, usual, uh, reputed, reputed company, but still, malicious users very often can, can intercept uh, public Wi-Fi because these are often uh, means that uh, malicious users will do just to capture your credentials. For example, if you're using public Wi-Fi to do uh, secure transactions such as uh, banking, these type of malicious users are always looking for these type of opportunities so that they can um, they can you, they can capture your credentials by redirecting you to those public Wi-Fi. So make sure if ever you you're doing any any uh, online banking, don't use public Wi-Fi. Try to use your, your mobile data. And cookies, cookies and privacy settings. With cookies, cookies, they're often, uh, they are just some, um, they are small text files or uh, uh, bits of information which are left on your computer by website that you have visited and which let them uh, remember things about you. Web Websites that use cookies, uh, they do it in order to gather information about their visitors. And cookies may also be used to store your preferences and settings for particular website, which means that your experience can be customized based on your past behavior. From a security perspective, cookies are, cookies are unlikely to be used maliciously against you, but uh, well, they are, they are unlikely to be used maliciously against you as they are just uh, text read by your browser. They don't contain any code uh, that could be executed. However, however, websites are able to get a lot of information about you and your website activity. Visit your, your, uh, your browser vendor's website for uh, more information on, on privacy and how to manage cookies. And um, with cookies, we, uh, we, we recommend that you clear them on a regular basis. So once you've, uh, you've visited some website, try to clear those cookies and also review your privacy settings, uh, especially on social platforms. We will share all the, all the content on how you can, you can uh, 
check your privacy settings or just configure them uh, accordingly on how you want them to be on different social platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And then with cookies and privacy, ensure you have multi-factor authentication turned on. Multi-factor authentication is just, is just an additional way of of identifying yourself on an online account. For example, if you might be using it already, but you're not really aware about it. For example, your, your, uh, your bank card. So the first factor is, is the card. So it is something that you have. And the second factor is the pin, which is uh, uh, something that you know. And there can be a third factor as well. For example, uh, when you're logging onto the website, they're asking you to answer some security questions before you can access your funds. So there are multiple factors which you have to, to go through, which, uh, which can allow you to afterwards access your account. So they are just additional measure of, of, of additional layers of protection to your online accounts. And uh, we recommend that you enable them on all the apps wherever you can uh, and website that you're using. There are some good instru some um, instruction that we will share afterwards on how you can enable MFAs on some common apps, for example, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Snapchat. So those those common apps we will share all the details on how to enable MFA uh, during the chat session and Q and A on Q and A session. Uh, when you're browsing uh, online, there are other stuff that you can do. So we, we recommend that you back up your files on a regular basis and to use a service that does not automatically like, uh, that does it automatically, such as Office 365 or a Google Suite. And it is good for SMEs. Uh, with, the, with your uh, personal information and prof professional information, like work and personal, try to keep them separate and make sure your connection is secure. One way of doing that is by using a, is by using a VPN. Uh, there are very often there are free VPNs uh, that are available, but free VPNs, you know, with everything which is free, there are some uh, disadvantages and free VPNs, they are often loaded with malware. So make sure you're using a paid version and you can have, you can check the antivirus that you're using, very often they will have uh, uh, VPNs provided depending on the package that you're, you're using. So do check for all the features which are available on your antivirus. And then if something goes wrong, for example, uh, you've clicked on a link or uh, you've downloaded something, report the incident as soon as possible to your IT person or your managed service provider, or if you don't have uh, any IT person or your managed service, provi uh, managed service provider, click, uh, go to cyber.gov.au. We will share that link again. Uh, and there are, there are specific information which is available to small and medium, uh, medium businesses, and they will guide you exactly on what steps you have to, to do to address it. And with your online accounts, change, change them as soon as possible. If you think you have uh, provided some, some confidential information, or if you think that you have, uh, you've had uh, provided your credentials to a fake website, change the, your password as soon as possible, as, as soon as you think it might have happened. And if you think uh, your, uh, if you think uh, you have been affected, inform your clients or contacts if anything in case was sent to them by, by the malicious user from your account, just to get in touch with them so that you avoid any type of, uh, of uh, miscommunication. And also check for unforized activity. For example, if uh, you think your account has been compromised and any type of transaction has been done from your account, try to contact the bank as soon as possible so that they can cancel any transaction which has been processed uh, in case. We, we are also providing you with some useful resources. For example, Have I Been Pwn is, uh, is, a, is a website uh, designed by uh, an Australian guy, uh, Troy Hunt. And 
on that website you can check if any of your uh, online email addresses have been compromised they have been in a data breach and you, you just have to put in your email address there and then once you click on that link they will tell you uh, on the websites where you have been breached and the type of information which might have been uh, compromised so as soon as you you've, you've uh, seen that your account has been uh, in a security breach change your password and uh, try to to read all the information that is being provided uh, uh, on that uh, on that website so that you know the type of information which was compromised and if you if possible change them there's there are also uh, there's also a good website uh, how secure is my password uh, we will share that link as well and this this uh, website uh, it's you you can type in your password there and it will tell you how long it takes to crack your your current password don't worry about it uh, typing your password there because it is not being taken to the internet it's just a local script which runs on your machine so you're not you're not going to send your password to anyone we will share all the links uh, during the Q&A session there's also uh, some uh, organization that you can contact in case you think you need help IDK, uh, IDK Helpline has some professionals and they are not uh, uh, tech people. They, are, they can help you in case you think you have, uh, you have uh, had uh, an identity theft or you have just had a breach in your business and they will, they will direct you to the, to the right authorities and they will give you all instructions on how you can, um, you can get through any breach that you might have had. You can also report it to cyber.gov.au and uh, Scamwatch as well. This, this is a very good web website where you can get all the type of scams which is happening, the latest scam. You can also subscribe to Scamwatch for the latest scam which, uh, which is occurring so that you know uh, as SMEs what, what type of threat you might be, uh, you might be uh, potentially uh, at risk with so that you can uh, take the necessary precaution. So thank you everyone. And uh, please make sure you follow us on LinkedIn, on Facebook and Twitter. And we are going to address any questions that you might have now. Please, if you have any question, just uh, drop them in the chat box and I will uh, try to respond to them. Thank you. If you don't have any questions, let me show you uh, the scam watch page in case you haven't uh, been, uh, you haven't, uh, you, you're not aware about it. So scam watch is where you can report any type of uh, 
of scams that you might have had. You will you can also subscribe to any type of latest uh, scams that are currently being uh, experienced so that you are aware about it. And you can also review some of the type of scams and the statistics. For example, here, uh, you can view more stats. We talk about phishing, but just in with regards to all scam types, so much money has been uh, lost uh, as at, uh, as at uh, September 2020. And these are only people who have reported. Some people might have not reported. So it might be, uh, it's more likely a lot more than that. There's also the Troy Hunt uh, website. Uh, have I been pwned? So here you can check if your email has been compromised has been in any type of breach. Uh, so as soon as you type in your email and you click on porn, you will get a list of all the, tra all the websites where your, if in case your password has been in any, your email, sorry, your online account has been in any breach and also the type of information which has been breached. For example, your username, your password. And as soon as you've, uh, you've seen the website where your password, your username or password has been breached, try to change your password as soon as possible. And then we mentioned about uh, how secure is my password? How secure is my password is where you can check whether your password is strong enough. As we said, password should be long, strong, and unique. And um, we also recommend to use the password manager, which will, will which will store all your password, and you will have to you will have to remember only one major password. But that major password will still have to be strong, long, and unique. And usually, the length is what makes your password uh, more complex, and it takes longer for the malicious user to crack your password or even the software. For example, here, uh, if I type in um, uh, a password like uh, I like pineapple on my pizza. So this is the amount of time that it will take uh, a computer to, to, to crack the password. So uh, I just copy and paste it because I'm not able to show you uh, what I'm typing. Um, So for example, I like pineapple on my pizza without any space. I copy and paste it here. So this is the amount of time it will take for, for a software to crack your, your uh, password. And with passwords, here I've typed in all small letters but password should be a combination of uh, lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters. So a combination of these will make it more complex for any malicious user or even a software to crack your password. So these are some of the, some of the useful tools that you can use in your business. And I'll share also with you the links that we said earlier. So I'm sharing with you now This is, these are some of the browsers that you can use to, uh, to browse securely. I'll share this on the chat box. Oops. Uh, the ad blockers, yes, uh, I'll send you the details for the ad blockers. I'll just share the link first. So with this website, you can, you can use this, this uh, website to browse more uh, securely. So if you're worried about your privacy, some of these websites are quite good. So read the instructions and um, you can make use of these websites as well. Uh, and then I'll share.
I'll show how you can uh, enable automatic updates for your for your for the different type of OS, so Mac, as well as Windows and Chrome. So just follow the instructions so that you can. Uh, hmm. So this is for Google on how you can uh, how you can get an automatic update, how you can configure automatic update on Google. They might have uh, removed the page or maybe they, they are doing some um, some updates, but uh, let me check again. So I would go back to you, they have some very, some very good resources. So make sure you visit those pages very often. Page not found. So they might, they might be doing some update on their website because this is a valuable, this is existing content which is not uh, available at the moment. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, it's not available at the moment. Oh, yeah, here it is. So this is for Windows. Oops. And then I'm going to share for, uh, for Mac uh, operating systems as well. Here it is. So this is, this is for the Mac OS. And then uh, we spoke about, uh, yes, I will, I will give you the information about ad blockers, but we spoke about uh, enabling multi-factor authentication on all the platforms that you're using, the common ones. So wherever they are available, make sure you enable them. And this here you will have, uh, so these are all the common uh, apps that you are using or you you yeah you might be using already so they will they will explain to you they will give you the instructions on how you can enable two factor authentication on them so make sure you have them on uh, they ha you have them enabled on all your your apps this is just an additional layer of security and they will show you how you can uh, you can uh, turn it on with the ad blockers uh, with the ad blockers, it can be as a separate plugin. So you just have to add it to your browser. You can ha add like a plugin. Uh, can you, uh, so is it, I don't have your name. I will have to send you through the right information because 
just showing you here, it won't be really uh, explicit. I'll have to send you the right information and it can be uh, ad blockers. That it's just an additional plugin which you have to download on your browser and install it so that whenever you're accessing a browser, automatically, automatically the ad gets blocked. There are ways that you can do it, but it depends on the type of browser that you're using. Just let me know what type of browser you're using first, and then I will send you the information. If you can also send me your email address, I'll send it directly to you. Thanks, for, I'll get back to you um, after the session. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any further questions, just let me know through the chat box. Uh, if I can ask, answer them right now, I will, else I will... Okay, Alan, I will send it to you too. So if you have any more questions, please let me know and uh, I'll try to address them. Thank you, everyone.